ourselves for we prepare ourselves for the next presenter, uh, Bogdan. He will be talking about mapping green goes open with the GIS uh, collective. Hello, um, I'm Bogdan, and I'm here uh, to show you how this collective works for open green map. I will talk about the project overview, some interesting technical de details, and what are my future plans with this app. But first, <laughs> who didn't heard about Green Map? Yeah, I guess everyone was at the previous talk. So, in <clears throat> one phrase, is uh, Green Map is a com community around the world who gather data points around sustainable living. Uh, in their neighborhoods or their country. And around five years ago, I was contacted by them to um, help them writing a mobile app that helps them to collect data on the field, on the site. And back then, uh, this is the result of my work, and back then I noticed some uh, problems. For example, here is a screenshot with a point taken in Berlin but I was able to put it on a map in Romania. So, yeah, not very nice. And you also had to fill the country every time when you added a, a site. And, yeah, this is not convenient because it's just easy to do a query in the database and find the country, right? <coughs> and they were using this old platform, a Drupal 6 uh, instance with a lot of plugins. And from my point of view, it, it was very hard to maintain, and at some point <coughs> they looked into migrating to some other platform, but none, none of these, these platforms were matching their needs. And after a while, I noticed that no one will go to do this upgrade, and if, we'll, if someone will want to do this, it will take a lot of time. So I... I thought that uh, it's a better approach to rewrite it from scratch. And before I moved to Berlin, I talked Chip with Ciprian and I told him that I want to take this challenge. And after a few um, months of development, um, some goals started to take shape. Because they, they started to ask me for a lot of nice features, I, I was thinking that this app can be used by many organizations. So I, my goal was to make an app that's easy to use and to understand because this might be used by hobbyists or maybe not GIS experts, so the visual language had to be very clear and relatable by the user. It had to be cu customi customizable in the way that you can put your own logo, you can decide who can re register to, to your service, Maybe you want to make it pu uh, public or private, or yeah, so on. It had to be easy to deploy because I don't expect that small organization to have a dedicated inf infrastructure team. So I have to make this very easy. Um, it has to be fast because who doesn't like a fast app? And it ha also had to work on small servers because not everyone has cloud infrastructure and so on. And I was able to transform this into this. Um, this is the home page where you already can see two nice features. For example, the legend, which it updates constantly with the icons that are visible on the current map, and you can also use it as a filter. You just click the icon that you are interested in, and you will see only those sites. And also, you can use it in combination with the search feature. But the most uh, interesting feature is the icon sets, because you can define a set of icons with attributes, and then you can collect data and see it on, on your uh, front-end uh, page. And um, you can see this contribution form, which is designed to to make you focus only on the current attribute that you are adding, and it also uh, adapts 
to the data that you want to add. So if you add a bear and some steps, then you will be asked on, only for the attributes for these icons, and you can forget about the other ones. And even if you don't want to add this attribute, you can say, I don't want to add them now, and you can add it later at home. And yeah, then you see your nice icon on your, on your map. The other features are like maps, uh, you have teams and uh, you can add any base map that you want. Now some technical details. <laughs> um, in order to achieve this, I decided to use the D programming language and Ember.js uh, for the front-end uh, framework. Why D? Because it has so many nice features and Ember.js offers um, a set of con uh, a set of uh, convenient uh, 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 ways to uh, that that help me, for example, to not write the uh, the data layer because I have it just for free. Um, but of course, using the lang, it's not uh, not that uh, have using the as. Uh, programming language also have some challenges because in the beginning there was no GIS libraries that they could use. It's hard to debug. I had to use the debugger in the command line and I really started to love segmentation faults. And there were weird bugs in the third party libraries that they used. As the architecture, it looks like this. Um, I have a doc server which just serves some markdown files and converts them to HTML. I have the static web app, which is just an Nginx that serves the compiled Ember app, and I have the REST API. This one was designed as a monolith, but I noticed that some requests sometimes took maybe 20 seconds, and I added a message queue, which receives uh, messages about the hard tasks that have that needs to be run. And once a task runner is empty, the message, it, it will be passed to this runner, uh, yeah, and it will do this in, in background. So you will have a very fast API. And there is this Mesolite uh, cron job, which spawns once a day and checks if all the metadata is uh, uh, valid. And if there is some incons inconsistency, it will trigger a, ta a task to fix it. Uh, for example, one of these tasks, tasks that I run is um, I keep a history of all the changes that happen in the database, or uh, I once you add a new <coughs> site on a map, you um, want to increase the number of contributors for that map. So this has to be in background because you might have thousands of points for a map. Yeah, so. D has this uh, way of doing programming, which is called generative programming. And for me, it's a way to make boring tasks more fun. So I use it to generate the REST API. Um, it, I use, uh, you can use it for serialization or deserialization, or you can use it to generate open API docs. In order to achieve this, you, you, you use compile time function evaluation which means that you can run your code while the program it compiles, uh, templates, code introspection, uh, mixing, statics, if and static for each. Um, you can look into the uh, programming language documentation. Um, you will find this very interesting. Uh, what is code introspection? For example, I have this simplified site structure and I can use this static for each to go through each uh, property. And in this block, I can write the code that does the serialization, validation, and whatever. <coughs> and this happens at compile time. So there's no runtime uh, spent for these uh, uh, topics. Uh, one interesting use case is that, for example, Ember.js expects to have the plural 
for the for my model, but in my code I use the singular as a struct name. So I use this template which just adds an S at the end of the type and I have the string with the plural. And yeah, this can be applied with to any structure in my code. Um, of course, not all plurals are created by this rule, so I also can add this string attribute before my struct and I have the custom plural. What you can also do is to introspect your functions and what attributes, uh, what parameters they have, and I use it for um, adding middlewares. Um, yeah, this is some code from, from, from the app. And when you put everything together, uh, your code looks like a Lego. So only the green lines here are specific to the site model. The other, the other uh, classes or instances can, can be used in uh, my other models. And I don't even have to write uh, the code that does the serialization or something for my site. It's generated automatically. Um, yeah, and on the front end, I have to uh, define the model again. And with this store uh, object, I can query the data from my server, and that's it. <clears throat> Another problem that I had was with serving the tiles. My uh, initial solution was to uh, add this custom route, which has a, as an argument a view box, and I would return all the sites that are in that view box. But this solution was very slow because sometimes I return it maybe the whole database. <laughs> and it was hard to cache because it's unlikely that the user will have the same view box twice. And I was also loading a lot of UNews data. And then I came with the second solution with, where I added uh, vector tiles which were much easier to cache, and I was able to split uh, the data into layers. You can see here the debug mode for the map. I have here the sites on one layer, and on another site I have the gr groups, where I only have to store uh, a counter. In order to achieve this, um, I wrote uh, some libraries which are open source. You can find them on GitLab. The first one is GOD, which is a GIS library. Um, handlebars, it's a templating li uh, library for HTML or XML. And uh, REST API generator. But of course, um, my work doesn't finish when I deploy the app. I also have to monitor it. So I use Grafana and Prometheus to get metrics from the system. And here you can see some screenshots with the memory consumption and the heat count for a small session. I also monitor the, the number of queries that I do to the database, and doing this simple um, monitoring, I can easily see that the icons uh, queries are more than 1,000 for, uh, for one small session, so I definitely have to optimize uh, this. Yeah, and I count the number of data in the database and some more metrics. For example, right now we have 43k of sites and, I don't know, maybe 700 teams. I cannot see it. So, what's next? Um, the mobile app. I, I'm working on a mobile app. Um, right now it's, it's written with Cordova, but I do plan to write native app because I really want to have an optimized system because when you are in, on the field or in the forest, I don't want to drain your battery. And yeah, it would be good to have this native app. I want to finish the WFS integration because it would be nice to, to work with the data in QGIS or your professional tools if you are a professionist. I want to create host maps uh, well, to create and host tiles from OpenStreetMap because one of my biggest challenges with this project was, wasn't the code, was how I can find free and open uh, tiles that also work fast. Right now for GreenMap we use OpenStreetMap which are pretty slow. They are good but yeah, 
it would be nice to have something more accessible. I want to add support for lines and polygons. Um, it would be nice to collect data from sensors because maybe you can hack an Arduino with some CO2 sensors or, I don't know, noise uh, de detectors and just put it on the green map and make this available to everyone. I want to allow discussions on the site page because sometimes maybe you might find some inconsistency in the data and you want to um, notify the one who added the site that there are some changes to do there. And of course, I want to open source the app. As conclusions, uh, I think using the most popular stack is not always the best solution. I was able to do this all by myself. Uh, gener generative programming means pro productivity. And yeah, this collective is the easiest and afford most affordable geodata management system. Yeah, this was it. I think I, w I went uh, too fast. So <laughs> do you have any questions? I have one question for you, Bogdan, that uh, maybe would answer things that would be interesting for people that are not uh, currently here, is um, how is it to deploy uh, your solution, because you're aiming it to be open sourced at many levels, how is it to be um, deployed by any field collector, and what infrastructure they need to deploy it? I mean, we are kind of, uh, let's say, we know pretty much how to, um, what kind of server we need for uh, common PHP, MySQL, or PHP, PostgreSQL, PostGIS thing. We need, and there are so many resources. What about this one? Yeah, for example, the whole microservice architecture runs on a, the small, smallest uh, virtual machine that you can buy from Hetzner, but you can, uh, Host it on every any cloud provider, and it it costs like five euros each month, which is like maybe two coffees. And um, yeah, I I create packages for Linux. You can install the package for uh, Ubuntu or Red Hat or whatever. And I also have Docker images, so if you want to do it on the cloud, you can release it in the cloud. Yeah. I have one more for you. Um, let's say I'm not so technical of uh, deploying this, even if it's easy, e easy um, but I'm just a regular user and I want to just tap, click a couple of times and um, I want to see, let's say, uh, data centric or geocentric form online and then I just want to start uh, collecting data. So I don't want to install it anywhere. I don't want to figure out where and how. But I may be uh, tempted to go just to a website and I say, okay, in five minutes I want to start collecting data. Do you plan having such a service sometime in the future for, let's say, individuals or small organizations? Um, I do plan to have this service in, in the future. I'm not sure when it will happen. And yeah, deploying it, it's like any other server. So, yeah. But I do plan to have something like you do on Slack, if you know it, where you just type your subdomain and you have the instance in five minutes. But this requires some more work and yeah, it will come in the future. I hope this uh, answers your question. Um, how long would it take for a non-technical person to um, say a biologist that want to take um, uh, collect data, um, let's say he wants to build 20 fields and does he need any programming skills just to um, 
build his own form and just start collecting? Well, this is the purpose of the app is that you don't need any programming skills in order to collect your data. So that's why there's the feature for, I don't know if I could. Yeah. There's the feature for defining your icon sets and you can there create any attributes for your icons. And I plan that in this uh, mobile app, um, to add a feature where you just add your, the URL to your instance and you will be able to access your data uh, very easy. So if you want to start a project, you can just do it overnight and yeah, you don't need to talk to any developer that, uh, to write this mobile app that helps you to collect the data. Yeah, and even if you in the middle of the project, you, dis you discover that your attributes don't fit the project. You can just change it and have it in maybe five minutes. Yeah. Uh, if you no longer have questions, then um, we uh, end the presentation and uh, we uh, wish you a um, healthy and happy lunch.